was in the circle when they clinched it in 2015. So he's been there. So he certainly has. Let's set the batting order for the visitors from USA. Matt Ratliff will lead things off. Derek Zekman is in the two spot. Matt Palazzo bats third. Eric Ochoa is the cleanup hitter. Tyler Dudley bats fifth. Bryce Kay in the sixth spot. Pat Sagdahl bats seventh. The veteran Nick Mullins in the eighth hole. And Gil Sines, defensive specialist, will be batting ninth. The defense for Team Canada decked out in their home whites. Shane Bolin out in left field. Bradley Ezekiel in center and Colin Walsh in right. Derek Mason's on the hot corner. Kevin Schellenberg is the shortstop. Brandon Horn, the veteran. We've seen lots of competition. He's at second base. <coughs> and Steve Mullally, of course, no stranger to anyone here that knows anything about Canadian fastball or softball, is at first base. And Brian Avery will be catching for Devin McCullough. And you're right, Devin McCullough was... Very impressive in his stint in 2015 in Saskatoon in Canada's gold medal run. And good to see him here finally getting the ball in game three for Team Canada. So we're just about set here to get underway. Canada, USA, it never gets dull, that's for sure. And in any sport anywhere, it's always a big robbery. So Matt Ratliff to lead things off here. And McCullough starts him off with a rise ball. If you don't know much about McCullough, good rise ball, good drop, back-breaking changeup, which is kind of his go-to pitch. But his accuracy is good, and he definitely is one of the best pitchers in the world. Yeah, I think it's the changeup that sets uh, Devo apart from the others on the staff. And the USA will uh, have to dial down a bit, not to uh, get overextended on the changeup. The 2-0 from McCullough is just up and not in the strike zone, so the count now 3-0. So the umpires for today's game at home plate, it's Lee Evans from Australia. Nobuhiro Endo from Japan is at first. Mark Porteous from New Zealand at second. And you have Yari Dostal from the Czech Republic at third. Substitute is Vladimir Liss from the Czech Republic. And Enrique Ramirez from Cuba is handling the clock as you see Matt Ratliff with a four-pitch walk to lead off this ball game. And that will bring up Derek Zekman. And are we looking for a bun here? Yeah. No, I think uh, they may, uh, may swing Zekman. He's been one of their power hitters for the last couple of cycles. He and uh, Palazzo, the veterans on the team, the two cornermen, much like Canada with Mason and Mullally. Ratliff, a big man down at first base. He stands about 6'2 or thereabouts, but he runs very well. He plays right field. He'll cover a lot of territory. And first to third, uh, he's as good as anyone on this speedy USA team. So good speed on the base pass. Devin McCullough finally finds the strike zone there to even the count at 1-1 one and one to Zekman. If there is a strength, uh, it is speed for the USA. Their outfield showing that. And McCullough gasses it back. That's in there for a called strike. So a ball and two strikes to Zekman here with the leadoff man in Matt Ratliff aboard with a walk. And Zachman chased the pitch out of the zone. It was that rise ball again, and he goes down for the first out of this ball game. That'll bring up the first baseman, Matt Palazzo. And Palazzo, no stranger to international and club play, Jim. He gets the round. Now, he's, this is his fourth cycle. He is the leader on this team. He's been playing at this level now for 10 years. He is the captain of the team. And his nickname, uh, in fact, Captain America. <laughs> so he is the, the go-to guy on this club. Very well respected uh, by all the players. And runner goes, and no chance for Avery to pull the trigger there. So you spoke of the speed of Ratliff, and it was on display there as he swipes the bag without a throw from Brian Avery behind the plate. There are faster runners on the USA uh, than Ratliff, but first to third, home to second. That long stride, he's as good as any. And a swing and a miss, that rise ball. And that's the thing about McCullough, if you can lay off the rise, 
Man, you only have the drop and the change to worry about. Easier said than done. Way it looks so good coming in. Done. You are so right. So a runner in scoring position here for the U.S. And McCullough goes back to the rise. Can't find his own. That'll even the count at two and two. Palazzo, a good contact hitter. He'll hit for power, usually uh, doubles, triples, that sort of thing. Runs very well, even as a veteran. And McCullough works over the corner. Didn't get the call. Getting a lot of support from the fans here in Whitehorse uh, on the call. No shortage of umpires here in this on these bleachers, that's but, for sure. But only one vote to cast, and that is Mr. Evans from Australia behind the plate. And he casted it, and it's a full count. Well, you see already trying to McCullough trying to establish the strike zone, get a feel for what Lee Evans, what he likes, what he doesn't. He appears to be giving the ins to lefties, but not the out and. There you have it. So a walk to Palazzo. Second free pass issue this inning from McCullough. And that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Erica Choa. And it's nice to see a Choa back in the lineup after that collision with the fence in game one. Well, it is. And it actually, him playing tonight has a lot to do with the lineup. You've got Zekman, who very often is the DP, playing at third base to get Ochoa into the lineup. I think physically they're not quite certain that he's back to 100%. He's still nursing, I guess you'd call it a whiplash injury to the neck. He struck the fence with his knee, then his face, but it is now his neck that has lingered. Well, when you look at things, that's probably the lesser of the evils. So you take the neck as opposed to having a concussion or yeah. a blown out knee. So good to see that he was able to continue in this tournament. And I think a good reason for Avery to have a bit of a conference with McCullough, maybe settle him down just a bit. McCullough's not getting the outside corner that he would like. He's getting the in, but not the out. And usually, Jim, you're, you, you're a pitcher. You know it's very rare that an umpire is going to give you both. So sure, you may want both. But as long as he gives you one, then you know what you're going to work with if he stays consistent. 2-1. That's on the corner for sure. Ochoa is viewed by many as the best pure hitter on this team. So happy to have him back in the lineup uh, are the folks of the red, white, and blue. Well, a big situation here early on. If the U.S. could get on the board first, put some pressure on Team Canada. And that ball's laced up the middle base hit. And rounding third and the throw home. Cut off over to second, not in time. So an RBI single for Eric Ochoa who delivers when need be, cashing in the speedy Matt Ratliff. And the USA lead this game one to nothing. Ochoa came into the game last night as a pinch hitter for Marcus Tan. And the question is, would they pitch to him? Adam Folker decided not to put him aboard. And we saw just uh, on that swing why he has that kind of respect. So Tyler Dudley with a healthy cut. And a swing and a miss. And you're right, Jim, we discussed that at length. And if Adam Fulker, because he's got a book on every hitter, in particular the good ones, if he suggests we don't pitch to him, then I would take heed to that. And McCullough comes back inside. So went with the rise and then came with the one in tight in the inside corner. And he's ahead in the count now, 0-2. Dudley is a newcomer to the USA team, his first international competition, but they're very high on this youngster. He's the second baseman for the U.S. And a good cut there. Got a piece of it, fouled it straight back, and the count will remain 0-2. The Americans have three uh, pretty much interchangeable parts in the middle infield. They use Chris Heinlein. We saw him last night in the infield. He's not starting tonight, so it signs it short, and Dudley at second but they can uh, all play both positions. Well, you certainly don't lose anything defensively with those three. That ball scribbler fielded by McCullough over to third for one. So they get that, the lead runner and cut down Palazzo with the force. Dudley's going to sit on first with the fielder's choice. And that's going to bring up Bryce Kay, the left fielder, with two away and two men aboard. 
Good defensive play over at third by Mason. A smart move, I think, hanging on to the ball. Best throws sometimes the ones you do not make. And Mason, of course, no stranger. He's a veteran as well. A lot of vets, and it's a real experienced core for Team Canada. Bringing over seven returnees from 2015 in Saskatoon when they took home the gold. There's that changeup that has been so effective. Looked good, and McCullough certainly wanted it. You've got to watch sometimes. That will sometimes do tricks on the umpire as well if you don't throw it on a regular basis. So consistency a big part, and hey, those boys in blue are human too. The 1-1, one -1 and waving at that was K. A little indecisive. That was an in-between, should I, shouldn't I? Yeah, McCullough overpowered him on that pitch, uh, made a decision way too late. Good speed in the box. Uh, maybe the fastest runner on the USA squad, but he's got to make contact. And a swing and a miss. So McCullough gets a big strikeout to end the inning and the threat, but not before Team USA strikes for one. Off one hit, two men left the board. We played a half, back for the home half after this. Just a reminder to everyone that smoking is permitted in designated areas only. Please ask the volunteers to direct you to the nearest designated smoking area. And please use the garbage receptacles and ashtrays located throughout the park. We'd like to thank Mizuno for their support of the World Baseball Softball Confederation. Mizuno is an official sponsor of the WBSC and of the Men's World Championship. Welcome back here as we get set for the home half of the first inning. It'll be Brandon Horn leading things off, followed by Shane Bolin and Bradley Ezekiel. Steve Mullally is the cleanup hitter. Derek Mason bats fifth. Andy Skelton is in the sixth spot. Colin Walsh will bat seventh. Brian Avery, the veteran, in the eighth spot. And Kevin Schellenberg will be batting ninth. The defense for Team USA, Bryce Kay out in left, Pat Sagdahl in center, and Matt Ratliff's in right field. Derek Zeckman on the hot corner. Gil Sines at short. Tyler Dudley's at second base. Matt Palazzo at first. And the veteran, Nick Mullins, seems to be everywhere on the diamond. He'll be catching for Tony Mancha as the first pitch to Brandon Horn was a strike. The aforementioned Nick Mullins, of course, the hero of last night's game. Uh, we talked about the situation where they chose to intentionally walk Ochoa, the next batter, Nick Mullins, Base hit, two runs, game. And that's what veterans do as Mancha misses down and the count now two and one to Brandon Horn. Poten possibly one of the most disciplined hitters to play this game. Horn rarely swings at a bad pitch, usually makes contact, plays solid D, hence the reason he's been a mainstay at second base for Team Canada over this last seven, eight years. He has proven over the years uh, he has the ability to succeed when it counts and in the big takes, games. Takes that in, and he draws a leadoff walk. So a similar start to this inning, bottom half, as it was to the top half. And this will bring up Shane Bolin, of course. And Mr. Bolin, no stranger to international and club play. 
You know, as a pitcher, sometimes you look at a lineup like Canada and you can pitch too carefully. I think you you see them steamroll a couple of other countries and you try and be too fine. When Mancha came in in relief last night, the first batter was a walk. He settled in, got his groove, and that's what he's got to do right now for the USA. 0-1 is a hard bouncer. Fielded over at short by signs and over not in time to complete the double play, but they do cut down the lead runner. So a good play by Gil Signs at short. Managed to get that over and record the out at second base. And there'll be one away for Brad Ezekiel. Not an easy play for Signs. He had to go way over to his right. Looked to first and uh, glanced to second. Saw he still had the out. Flipped to Dudley. Dudley making a nice turn, but not in time. So Ezekiel now will look at a ball low in the zone. Signs is another of the 2017 discoveries. Uh, hails from Denver, Colorado. Not uh, typically seen as a hotbed of fastball, but they have been out shaking the bushes trying to find a new talent, a number of them on this squad. Well, I think that's, if you want to have the best represent you, you may have to shake a bush, a tree, or maybe even lift over a rock or two to get the best talent. As that pitch inside to Ezekiel. And he's behind in the count now, one ball, two strikes. And of course, Bradley's brother, Blair Ezekiel, a member of Team Canada for a number of years. Bradley now has stepped in and plays a vital role as far as leadership goes, him and Steve Mullally, as well as Brandon Horn. And that ball is laced off the glove, knocked down by Zekman, not in time to complete the double play, but that's a great a play by Darren Zekman. For sure. Great play by Darren Zekman to knock that ball down. That ball is in the hole, in the 5.5 hole. Looked like a base hit. Had the sense of mind to keep it in front. Got the lead runner. So the U.S. continue to take down the uh, lead runners and cut anyone from remaining in scoring position. It'll be Steve Mullally now who steps in. And anyone who knows anything about softball knows Steve Mullally and what he did in Saskatoon and has continued to do over his career. He has said that this will be his last hurrah. And I'll tell you, it'll be a big void to fill for Team Canada if Mr. Malali Lolly's not around. And I don't say that, it's his entertainment factor that's almost equal to his ability when he steps in the box. And a swing and a miss. So probably has the most power on this team. Him and Avery probably the ideal power hitters in the Team Canada lineup. Well, we're in the double number three, a reminder of that three home run performance in the gold medal game just two years ago. And had a notion as Mancha tried to get him to chase that rise ball out of the zone. And Malali has been known a time or two to go after that pitch. So Team USA has done their homework. And again, Malali, no stranger to the U.S. either as that pitch in there for a called strike to round the count full at three and two. Good crowd on hand here, overcast and Whitehorse and Malali waved at it. Mancha getting the job done, striking out Malali to end the inning and the threat. So no runs, no hits, one runner left the board. We've played one complete. The score, U.S. 1, Canada nothing.
Welcome back here to the Pepsi <laughs> Softball Center in Whitehorse, Yukon. Top of the second inning, U.S. leading one nothing. It'll be Pat Sagdahl, followed by Nick Mullins and Gil Sines, the seven, eight, nine hitters for the Americans. And Devin McCullough in there for a strike. So the rise ball now. Sagdahl certainly not pleased with the call. Neither was Mullins on deck. He walked uh, halfway over to the plate to say something to the pl home plate umpire. And there's that change up, and it's a good one. Probably something like uh, we aren't getting that pitch. Well, I think Mullen has to be careful. He's got to be behind the dish, and he certainly is a veteran enough to know how to project and, and, and ask the questions, get his idea across in a at least courteous manner. That's yeah, you're not, not going to be carried over. You're, you're not going to endear yourself to the home plate umpire with that. Uh, and you're right. He's an important cog for the USA. He's the, the general back there and the anchor. So a one-two count here to Sagdal. Sagdal, great speed. He and Kay are probably the two fastest on the club. Joined the team for the 2015 cycle, so he does have experience at this level. Hails from the Richmond, Washington State area, way up in the Pacific Northwest. And that pitch lifted up, and Colin Ford is Mason, and he will make the grab for one away. So Sagdahl erased on the pop-up. That'll bring up Nick Mullins, the catcher, for his first look at McCullough and McCullough seems to be settling in here. We've seen that change up early on and all over that outside corner for a first pitch strike. And the 0-1 missing down to run the count even at 1-1. One Mullins batted in the eighth spot against Australia also. Only had two at-bats, a strikeout, but one big one. The two-run single, game winner. And that one nibbling on the inside corner didn't catch any of the plate. So the count now, two balls and a strike. Well, that was a pivotal game yesterday, particularly with the tough schedule the U.S. had early on. And that ball's lifted up. And will stay in the park as settling under it and making the grab is Bradley Ezekiel for the second out. So a deep fly ball from Mullins. Just missed that one. Didn't quite get enough of the barrel on it, uh, lifting it up instead of out. Looks like there's a little bit of wind and it's blowing in as opposed to out. And maybe had it gone the other way, might have hit a jet stream or two and could have drifted out either way. In steps Gil Sines, the number nine hitter. And I said Kay and Sagdal were the two fastest. Uh, Sines would tell you that he is, and he may well be. We'll hopefully see a foot race before it's over. And just couldn't put a, pull his bat out of the way of that. So Sines, I think, is going to be in the hole here. We'll see what the call is. I thought it went off the handle of the bat. Speed is a great tool. It is a strength of this team. Uh, they say speed never slumps, but you still got to get on board. And that pitch flared up. And going back is Brandon Horn, and he's money in the bank. So three up, three down for the Americans here. Uh, there's nothing new, and we're head to the home half of two. We'll be back here in a moment.
Welcome back here for the bottom of the second inning. It'll be five, six, seven for the red and white. Derek Mason followed by Andy Skelton and Colin Walsh. They'll get their first look at Tony Mancha. Derek Mason, of course, has been around the club and international circuit. Big man, plays a solid third base, can hit the ball. Another cog in the Canadian wheel. As Mancha, the 1-0 pitch inside. So 2-0 to Mason. That Mancha beard has been his trademark for a number of years. And that pitch is driven high, but it's going to stay in the park. Sagdahl settles under it and makes the grab. So allowed out to center field. Gets the crowd out of their seats momentarily, but that'll be one out. And that'll bring up Andy Skelton. And if you don't know much about Andy Skelton here, his first tour of duty, he uh, actually second tour of duty. Skelton, of course, a good pitcher, an excellent hitter. And sitting in the DP spot today, takes a look at a called strike. Lance Wynn alongside Jim Flanagan here and the crew from Sports Canada TV. Glad you've tuned in. As that pitch is in there for a strike. The ballpark broadcasting crew. Short just... Mr. Blair Setford, who is keeping things in line at home base. Ballpark Bristol. That ball is going to shoot its way through the hole on the right side. So Andy Skelton with the first hit for Team Canada. And it's of the one-out variety, and that will bring up Colin Walsh. The two teams on the field uh, built differently, perhaps, but they do share one thing in common, and that is depth and we're seeing it in the lineup, uh, Skelton into the lineup tonight instead of some of the others you might have predicted or expected and delivers with a base hit. And Walsh follows that one off, and you're right. You look notable sides. We spoke about who's on the bench for Team USA, Team Canada, with Matty Waugh and Johnson and Hunter, as well as Ryan Boland. So both teams very deep with talent. And Mancha works the middle of the plate now and jumps out in front. No balls and two strikes. We will get you caught up on some of the scores from today's action as this is the finale of day three and Mancha missing outside. So a good waste pitch. Count now one ball and two strikes. Tony Mancha was the starter in the opening night game against Argentina. He went five in that one. They lost five to one, Manley finishing up. Last night, it was Manley going five, and Tony Mancha doing his Kenley Jansen impersonation, doing a six-out save over Australia. Certainly Tony's the workhorse, though. Certainly one of the best ball games of the tournament, that 2-1 win for the U.S., and when you look at their early schedule having to face, of course, some of the big boys early on, they needed to get at least one of the first three until their schedule kind of lightens up just a bit. And Walsh chased that one down, and the count will remain at two and two. I think the thing that the Australia win did, it puts them in control of their destiny early. Uh, they were on the bubble in Saskatoon. They lost their last pool play game. They don't want to find themselves needing that last win to get in. That ball is lifted up and high but short. Sagdahl, again, will call for it and record the second out. So two fly balls to center field. We'll sandwich a single by Skelton and bring up Brian Avery. And, I mean, you, you talk about that, Jim, it's kind of – Two schools of thought. Do you would you like to have a tough schedule early on to get your team into it, or would you rather have it earlier, let them warm up, and you know ramp up in a sort of a gradual motion? I would not uh, write the schedule uh, for any team with three in a row like that. I, I think you can make a, a better argument or a good argument uh, if you have a tough opponent 
Maybe if you're going to play a team like Canada that's the gold medal defending team, you want to catch them early. Low roller fielded by Zachman at third in time. So a single goes for not. 5-3 on the final put out, and down go Team Canada. We play two complete. It's the U.S. one, Canada no score. Welcome back here as we head to the top of the third inning. It'll be the top of the shop for the red, white, and blue and Ratliff followed by Zekman and Palazzo. Of course, it was Ratliff that got on with the leadoff walk in the first, stole the base, and came around the score courtesy an Erica Choa single. And that's been the only scoring so far in this ball game. So McCullough back to work here, and he pours in a strike to start things off to Ratliff. Ratliff from the American Fork, Utah area up around Salt Lake City, which for many years was a hotbed for men's fast pitch. The and there's that change up. Sorry to interject, Jim, but that was a good one. Swing and a miss, and the count 0-2. Larry Miller, the uh, former owner of the Utah Jazz NBA team, a big fast pitch uh, booster player and down goes Ratliff couldn't check the swing and leadoff man is erased and that will bring up Derek Zekman the third baseman Zekman 0 for 1 with a strikeout not the at bat that Ratliff wanted uh, just couldn't figure out Devo the pitch sequencing by Avery and Devo very nice there's that change up, Zekman way out in front and couldn't <coughs> keep it between the lines. It got awfully close. But way out in front of that change. And you will see McCullough will try to hide that, maybe use it once in the first inning, maybe throw it twice in the second. But come any time after the third, he'll throw it. Rarely does he throw it back to back, but it depends on the hitter. He can do that as well. So he's got very good command of that change up. Well, Zekman at the plate, very good power. He was one of the top hitters for the team in 2015. Unfortunately, didn't have a lot of company. Good power, especially uh, for someone hitting in the two-hole. Well, this Team USA, upon looking at the lineup before we headed here to Whitehorse, I thought it was probably the most talent-laden and well-dispersed, meaning you have the youth, but you also had some of the veteran core there. And I thought of the years that I've been doing this, this year is probably the most well-balanced team that I've seen the U.S. put on the field. As McCullough makes the play, does it himself. Good fielding pitcher. And down goes Zekman on the ground out, and that'll bring up Matt Palazzo. Like having an extra infielder with uh, McCullough, helping himself out. Good athlete, and if you notice on his release point, he's in very good position to field as well. Palazzo walked in his only other at bat. Managed to be erased on a fielder's choice. There's the change. And a swing and a miss from Palazzo. And it's certainly not the speed, but it really does have a lot of movement on it as well, Jim. So it's not just your regular change where he's taking something off. It actually doesn't go straight either. And there it is right there. Took it, it off again. So back-to-back -back change-ups to Palazzo. 
just knowing it's there, it gets inside your head. You can't dig in. You can't really uh, square up. You've got to keep the hands back. And then when he throws two in the same count back to back, you just don't know. Makes it tough. The 2-1 is a ground ball. Fielded by Mason at third. Over to first in time. So a 1-2-3 quick inning for Devin McCullough and Team Canada. They'll get right back up to bat. one nothing in favor of the red, white, and blue back here in a moment. Back here for the bottom of the second inning. Big Pool A matchup, Canada-USA. It'll be the number nine hitter in Kevin Schellenberg to lead things off. Then back to the top of the shop in Brandon Horn and Shane Bowling. Did Ratliff forget uh, that uh, they were out in the field? Uh, <laughs> I think No, I think it was equipment over there. They were doing something okay. to his glove. Yeah, don't, don't put, don't put Late it on, arrival. on Ratliff, you know. <laughs> Just forgot that the inning was over. Manchester starts Schellenberg off with the pitch outside for ball one. Shelley, of course, a longtime player out of the Vancouver, B.C. area. And Manchester missing up, so... 2-0 and count here to the number nine hitter in Kevin Schellenberg. Well, Manch has been solid up to this point here. That ball lifted up to the gap going back, but well under that is the speedy rat lift to make the grab and record the first out of the inning. So crowd was up, ready to cheer, but that ball was not near leaving the yard, and it'll take it back to the top of the shop in Brandon Horn. Horn with a leadoff walk in his only other at bat, erased on a fielder's choice. So just one hit surrendered up to this point by Mancha. And he pours in a strike to Horn. Despite the <coughs> overcast skies, there is not a empty seat in a house here. As Mancha comes in, and that may have clipped him. And I don't think it makes a difference if they caught. They're going to review that. And Lee Evans, the home plate umpire, is not sure if he's calling Horn back or. And, I mean, Brandon Horn's a consummate professional. He's not the kind of guy to take a freebie. He likes to earn everything. But, I mean. I've been always of the school, okay, if it brushes your uniform, eh, you know, but if it really got you, I get it. Well, the home plate umpire is Lee Evans from Australia out with the rest of the crew. Now he's going to have a quick word with John Stewart, the skipper for Canada. Horn staying at first base, so I believe that is the call. And Denny Bruckert will come halfway, and so they will be bringing Brandon Horn back. And I'm sure Brandon Horn's okay with that. He's one of those guys that would much rather earn it than have it handed to him. So the 1-1 one -one now to Horn, and that pitch just missing outside. So two balls and one strike. And Horn, got a twist.
twist, but couldn't keep it in fair territory, so that'll even the count now at two and two. It is a big crowd, Lance, and you know that we've had some really sunny weather of late. Uh, this was not the kind of night where you say, it's a great night, let's go to the ballpark. Uh, they're here because they want to see a great game, and it is a packed house. Mancha missing up, so that will run the count full three and two. And uh, the crowd is spilled over around the outfield fence as well. So no shortage of support for the tournament and, of course, for your host nation, Team Canada. 3-2, way up. So Horn works his second walk of the ball game. Second walk in as many at-bats, and that will bring up Shane Bolin. Controversy rendered moot. Horn at first base. I would have to agree, and Bolin, of course, reached base on a fielder's choice, but he would end up on the receiving end of a fielder's choice, a uh, batter later to be erased. So second time through the order, and that one is a line drive to second, and that'll be a double play. So Tyler Dudley getting it done, good heads-up play. He erases the threat. So down go Team Canada. Two, three. We'll be back here. One nothing in favor of the Americans. Back after this. In the bottom of third for Canada. No runs and no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. Uh, after three complete innings, USA one, Canada nothing. The West 96.1 FM is the official radio station of the 2017 WPSC Men's World Championship. Tune in for all the latest championship coverage or listen online at ctrw.com. Olsen Coors is an official sponsor of the 2017 championship and proud, proud supporter of Yukon softball community. Welcome back as we head to the top of the fourth inning, I believe we're at. That's right. One nothing ball game in favor of Team USA. It'll be four, five, six hitters and Erica Choa, Tyler Dudley, and Bryce Kay. The scheduled three hitters for the red, white, and blue. Devin McCullough back to work on that outside corner for a called strike. Ochoa, as we mentioned, uh, suffered the whiplash injury. Uh, is not going to help it uh, looking back at the home plate umpire with that uh, look. No, but I'm not even sure you can bring that up after that solid single he had in his first at bat. He looked pretty good with an RBI as well. He's been responsible for the only run of this ball game up to this point. So a valuable piece to this USA puzzle is Ochoa as he takes that pitch for a ball. And the count now, two balls and one strike. Ochoa from Imperial, California, which is right down near San Diego, a little bit south of San Diego. And McCullough comes with a rise ball inside corner for a strike. Even the count now at two and two. Big pool A matchup here, and there's that change. Nibbled on the corner. Good job from Ochoa to take that pitch. And the count now is full at three and two. And that pitch fouled off. Ochoa had a good hack at that one. And we'll see what kind of adjustments McCullough and Avery will make. And I say that because you know as a pitcher, Jim, when someone takes a healthy cut at your pitch, chances are you don't want to throw on that same one again so he can lock on. So McCullough's got some options to work with. And there's that change, but it's bounced in, and it'll be a leadoff walk for Erica Choa as they appeal it. No go on the swing, and leadoff man aboard for Tyler Dudley. Dudley reached base on a fielder's choice in the first. 
Lance, that ends the string of seven straight outs, seven straight uh, batters retired by Devo. It was the walk to lead off the first inning that caused trouble. That's the difference in the game. Coming around to score on the Ochoa hit. That one hit in the hole over to first and not in time for the double play. <laughs> so a good job there by Schellenberg to get that on the short hop and get the lead running. So 6-4 on the put out, but Dudley will be at first base and Ochoa is erased. So one away for Bryce Kay, and he struck out to end the first in his only other plate appearance. And a big swing and a miss. So McCullough's got the rise ball going. If you chase that, you're at his mercy. If you lay off that, then you limit his options and give yourself a better chance to swing at something that's in the strike zone. And he comes right back, runner goes, but that throw is air mailed out to center field. No chance though for Dudley to advance on the play. But you talk about a guy like, for example, a Ryan Bolin, who is a very good catcher. Not that Avery is a bad one. He's just got a few more years experience. And not a, not a good throw, but it looked like he was uh, trying to get a grip on it and didn't quite get it before he let it go. No chance of getting Dudley down at second. I think it's fortunate <coughs> that there was no damage done, meaning an extra base taken. So a little bit of a conference here. And just to get you caught up, it's been a busy day three here. Japan all over Turkey, 24 nothing in that game. It was Dominican Republic, 15 nothing over India. Argentina, 8 nothing winners over Hong Kong. And in the game of the day to this point, it was Denmark, a one nothing win over Botswana in a pitcher's duel there. And back to action here. Big swing and a miss. So on three pitches, Bryce K goes down swinging. Just the fourth strikeout of this ball game for McCullough. And that'll bring up Pat Sagdahl, the center fielder, who popped out in his last at bat, 0 for 1. And McCullough gassed that one up over the outside corner for strike one. Runner in scoring position here for the United States. And Tyler Dudley. Sagdal, very much a contact hitter, relies on his speed to get aboard. Chased that one up and fouled it out of play. That's the pitch he's got to lay off, Lance. You cannot go after that rise ball. He's got good speed out at second in Dudley. He just needs to put it in play, something that can utilize his own speed. That's not the pitch that he wants to be swinging at. Don't try to hit for power if that's not your <coughs> game. Do what you do best, and Sagdahl is a contact hitter with good wheels. Behind in the count now 0-2 as McCullough's going to get a reset, and out comes John Stewart. And a bit of a meeting just to, I guess, maybe reaffirm what you are or aren't going to throw to Sagdahl or what you will do if there's a single or you're coming home or you're going to try to cut it off. Yeah, I don't think the discussion is about who they want to pitch to. I think it is. it will be Sagdahl they pitch to just. Just to get you caught up uh, on that one nothing win, Denmark, it was Tim Hansen going the distance, 12 strikeouts, gave up five hits. Beat Tahisha Mo Mohali, who had 15 strikeouts for Botswana. Hansen already with uh, one player of the game on her. Sounds like another. He certainly got our vote. And that one from McCullough bounced in there. Good waste pitch, a little risky. But the count, one ball mm -hmm. and two strikes. Canadian fans sitting on their hands waiting for something to happen here. They'd be happy with a final out of the inning. 
First and foremost, McCullough bounces that in, and Dudley's going to trot over to third base. So with a 2-2 count now, you've got a runner at third and a contact hitter in Sagdal at the in the batter's box. So a tough inning for Brian Avery behind the plate for Canada. John Stewart now, skipper again out, uh, Derek Mason standing nearby. So it looks like, I guess the discussion is about which baseball or which softball McCullough gets to use. He wants his choice. Home plate umpire Lee Evans says he's going to take whatever ball I'm going to give him. And that's what Derek Mason's arguing about as well as, as Mr. Stewart. And... Derek Mason getting into it a little bit with uh, Lee Evans, well, uncharacteristic for him. but It is, and if you've got a box of balls, why are you limiting it? And no one's saying you've got to put them all on display, but no pitcher wants a new one. That ball is up the middle, and great play from Schellenberg in time to make the play. Oh, and the USA is going to argue that one. defense there by Kevin Schellenberg, robbing Pat Seidel of a hit and an RBI. And taking that run away, and you can bet Greg Hicks, the assistant coach, is irate over there. Well, he follows uh, Nobundo Budo of uh, Japan all the way down towards home plate to give him an earful. Pat Sagdal thought he was safe. Wisely headed back to the dugout to stay out of trouble. It was uh, Coach Greg Hicks coming down to argue it. Second opinion, Mr. Wynn. Well, I thought it was a very close play. I thought that they just got him. And I say that based on the fact that with a roll on the bag and a good throw, I think you if it's a tie, I think you kind of got to give the edge to the fielder only because it was such a great play. Maybe we need to ask and get a second opinion from one of from someone but who doesn't have a non-biased opinion. I will say, Mr. Wynn, it was an amazing play by Schellenberg. I think we'd be on the phone with New York. Okay. If it was I, an MLB, we'd be looking at the agree. replay. I mean, the question is, what would someone like, say, Daryl Helmer say? What would his call be, right? You know, and, you know, he is a, he is a classic homer, which that's one of the reasons we like him. So <laughs> I'm sure he would have his... Uh, his opinion, nonetheless, but he's not working, so we'll leave him out of the discussion, and we'll move along. So, bottom of the fourth inning now, 3-4-5, meet of the order up for Team Canada in Bradley Ezekiel, followed by Steve Mullally and Derek Mason, and we'll see if that little exchange has given the Canadians a little momentum here. Uh, it's going to be important for Team USA to stay composed after that. And to you keep just the crowd took the, the words game. right out of my mouth. That's the important thing. They have the lead. They would like to have gotten the call, but they've got to turn the page and move on. And Ezekiel looked at a pitch that looked pretty good. Lee Evans disagrees with my opinion, and the count even at one and one. Well, they've got a good coaching staff, and it will be up to them to make sure that and Ezekiel with a base hit through the left side of the infield. Lead-off single for the red and white, and that will bring up Steve Mullally. And I think I would normally ask you in this situation if you think small ball would be in order, but it's very rare that Steve Mullally would be called on to lay down a bunt. Yeah, much like Zekman in the first inning, uh, same kind of a hitter. So a man aboard here in the bottom of the fourth inning, trailing by a run, Steve Mullally at the dish, and first pitch swinging, fouls that one out of play. We'll see. It was an impressive sequence that got Mullally to strike out to end the first. Teased him with a rise ball, had him swinging on the rise ball, went back to the drop, and eventually got him to wave at a pitch out of the strike zone. Yeah, the, the third strike was way away. And that goes behind Malali, and Ezekiel will scamper down the second base on the wild pitch. And we spoke about composure here, and it's going to be vital. And I think there's a veteran move from Nick Mullins as he comes out to maybe just have a little breather. This is the 
softball version of a timeout just to kind of slow the roll. Actually, it might even have been Mancha that called it. I saw Mancha turn to him and had his hand up and waved him like, let's take a moment. Well, so. either one of these two have had plenty of experience and know when a good time is to maybe take a breath here. And Count one and one here to Steve Mullally, the cleanup hitter for Team Canada, trailing by a run. And another rise ball, and Mullally again had a notion. He always has a notion with those rise balls. It's just a matter of whether or not he can hold off pulling the trigger, and he did there. And down in the zone. So three and one the count here to Mullally, and I don't know if you give in to him or not. I think maybe a trot down to first base might be in order. But we'll see what Mancha has in mind. And he goes at him, Malali swing and pops that a mile high and it will drift just out of play. So Malali fouls the 3-1 pitch off and runs the count full now. And I would say over on the American side, but uh, it is uh, most definitely a Host city I'm crowd. I'm not quite sure there is an American side in this ballpark right now. And doesn't matter where you go, there's always American supporters. It's just I have a funny feeling they're vastly outnumbered here today. It's a long <laughs> drive. <laughs> That's right. And again, the rise ball. So Malali <laughs> holds off and works the walk. And Canada's got something brewing here with two men aboard and no one out for Derek Mason, the third baseman. Well, the Americans need to stay out of a big inning. Canada certainly is capable of those. We saw it against a quality team like Argentina. In a moment, they can tack on three or four runs. So that has to be the focus right now. One out at a time. Don't let them generate the big inning. Mason, of course, a deep fly ball to center in his only other at bat, and he looks at a pitch outside for ball one. By the same token, the U.S. Uh, with a lot of confidence in their defense, especially that infield, they would like to see a double play. And Malali Walken sets that up. And Mancha missing downstairs. <laughs> so Mancha has been rolling along here appears to be struggling a bit with his control. And don't see anyone working in the Team USA bullpen as of yet, but that might change quickly. And Mancha missing down as, yes, you will see. And that looks like... That's uh, Dwayne Weiler, I believe, the newcomer to the team. It looks like another conference is going to be in order here with a 3-0 count to Mason. And you can bet the question is, are we going to go right at him and battle back into the count, or are we going to give in? So the stage set here with two men aboard and nobody out for Mason in the driver's seat with a 3-0 count. Bat on the shoulder, pitch on the corner for a called strike. Three balls, one strike, nobody away. Canada trailing by a run here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And Mancha nibbles, didn't get a bite, and another walk, second of the inning, issued by Mancha. And the bags are full here for Andy Skelton, the designated player. Lance, it is Dwayne Weiler up and throwing on the sideline for the U.S. Uh, out of the viewer's uh, range, but he is the young lefty just added to the team. Uh, final weekend in Vancouver, faced Team Canada. Pitched pitch very well for five innings. And Mancha Missa goes off the backstop, but Ezekiel wisely stays where he was <laughs> as that was a very favorable bounce off the screen. Came right back to Mullins, and Ezekiel would have been DOA, and out comes Denny Bruckert, 
head coach of Team USA and certainly wasn't a, a long warm up if he's going to go maybe just to give him some extra time to warm up. But I thought for a moment that he had motion to the sideline but uh, just trying to settle things down. Like you said, I think it's an important time in this game here to be very deliberate about what you're what you're doing and what you're going to do. And you need to be on the same page. Infield has to be on the same page with the pitching tandem. And that pitch is in there for a strike to Skelton. So one ball, one strike. Skelly with a single in the second inning. Mancha, of course, with a good hard down ball. You'd expect to see him work it here, try and get the double play. And a swing and a miss. So a good pitch from Mancha. Got Skelton to swing over it. And right now it's Mancha up on the count. One ball, two strikes. And missing down. So two and two, the count. Good eye from Skelton there. Very good discipline. So a couple downs, like you said, Jim, from Mancha. We'll see what he goes with as he's shaken off Mullins twice. And they will need to go out and get on the same page as they were clearly in disagreement on what the 2-2 pitch should be. Well, Mancha walked the leadoff hitter of the game, but then really settled into a pretty good groove. I think it's apparent that the uh, controversy over the call still lingering in the air. We'll see which way it plays. 2-2, Two -two, swing and a miss. Down goes Skelton. Beautiful drop ball from Mancha. Didn't get the double play ball, but he gets a big, big out. Just now looking for another down ball for double play, and, and they're out of the inning. So just the second strikeout of the ball game for Mancha, and that'll bring up Colin Walsh. So one away here, bag still full for Team Canada. Canada with a chance to break it open right now on the short end of a 1-0. And that pitch is in there for a strike. So a bit of a quick conference. A lot of cat and mouse going on here as Much both coaches know the importance of this here, this time, pivotal part of this ball game right here. Much better rhythm by Mancha on the last couple of pitches, uh, maybe catching his breath. And hard hit ball down the third. You're going to touch third over to first in time, but not sure if he touched the bag. But Oops. again, the controversy is going to continue a good play it's uh, Andy Skelton down still on the first base side you see it there on your screen being tended to I think that's Colin Walsh I think he got clipped on the way by I'm sorry I don't think that I think Palazzo initially may have missed the bag on the first step and came back and that's where the leg got a bit tangled and Walsh went down in a heat but certainly a an outstanding play by Derek Zekman at third base to touch the bag and then get it over to first in time to get the double play and erase the threat. And we're going to hope that Colin Walsh is okay on that play. But an opportunity squandered by the red and white. So we will attend to Mr. Walsh, and it's still a one-run game. We'll be back here on Sports Canada TV in a moment. Transportation provider for the championship from industrial to employee transportation. 
for corporate travel to athletics using standard charter fleet services guaranteeing safe and reliable group travel. Pearl Harbor welcomes all participants to Whitehorse. As an official supplier of the championship, they offer Whitehorse's only covered lumber yard. <laughs> Welcome back here to the slide to five. It's the top of the fifth inning, and we're just waiting to see who will go out to replace Colin Walsh out in right field. You hate to see the injuries. Uh, you have to think for a moment also Walsh as a pitcher. You wonder, will he get an opportunity to do that? We'll wait for the official announcement. Ezekiel definitely back out in center and not quite sure. Can't see the number out there if that's Ryan Bolin or Mark Johnson. So I think it looks like Mark Johnson that is going to go out and play right field. And it'll be Nick Mullins to lead things off, the number eight hitter. Mullins flied out to center field in his only other at bat, that in the second inning. So the U.S. dodge a bases loaded bullet get out of it and we spoke about the momentum swing and we knew it was going to go one way or the other Canada could have broken that open and take the momentum just based off that Schellenberg defensive play instead the U.S. buck up remain composed and get the key double play when they needed it and McCullough pours in a strike on the inside corner to even the Carolina one ball one strike or I believe it's two balls in yeah, fair to say they had Mancha on the edge. Uh, a couple of walks looked like he just lost that rhythm, lost the groove, but found it when he needed to. Got the strikeout on Skelton, and then the double play ball, the veteran Zekman making a nice play. Big, big outs for the Americans. They hold the lead. So three balls and one strike to count here to Mullins. And missing up. So leadoff man aboard, courtesy a walk. Third free pass, sorry, fourth free pass issued by McCullough today, and that will bring up Gil Signs, the shortstop. It has been a problem for both pitchers. Uh, back in the first, it was Ratliff leading off the first with a walk. You had Ochoa leading off uh, last inning with the walk, and a couple on the other side uh, for Mancha as well. So they both had that problem. So signs looks like he looks like there's going to be a pinch runner, I guess, for Mullins. And you talk about a little bit of speed. Looks like Marcus Tan now has come in to run. So I would expect potentially a, a bun here and the USA to play some small ball. Runs obviously at a premium here, and we'll see if they can't at least get the run in scoring position. McCullough comes with a rise ball out of the zone. And signs not showing bunt. Surprise to me. Didn't even flinch. At least on the first pitch. Tan runs well over at first. And that pitch looked good on the outside corner, but Lee Evans says, uh-uh. And Devin McCullough certainly wanted that call, as did the rest of the Canadian fans here. And, and signs. Still not showing bunt. And that pitch, a good hack there from Signs. He certainly didn't show bunt there. Had a good cut, just couldn't keep it between the lines. And the count now, two balls and one strike. So a very conscious decision on the part of the Americans to play for something other than that one run. You face a team like Canada, maybe, yep. And again, that rise ball is up. And he was showing bunt on that one, so go figure. So 3-1 count here. And a good hack fouled straight back by Signs. He had a good rip at that McCullough pitch. So the count full here. Runner on first base, nobody out. Top of the fifth inning. <laughs> I'm not 
sure why you would argue if the umpire said 2-2. Two -two, you're arguing a 3-2 count. And that ball is chopped foul. Good job by Sines to stay alive. Just got a piece of that one almost by him before he made contact. Certainly working hard here. As this battle has raged on between these two. So, and I guess McCullough is going to get a couple options this time as to his choice of what he wants to throw. And an important part here. There's a box full. <laughs> there are. Full count here. Sign, swing, and a miss. Down he goes. So Devin McCullough <laughs> rears back for a little something extra. Records the strikeout. Just his fifth strikeout of the game, and that'll take it back to the top of the shop. Leadoff hitter in Matt Ratliff. Ratliff 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. And a swing and a miss. Well tardy on that fastball was Ratliff. Ratliff scoring the only run of the game thus far in his last at-bat. Just looked like he was fooled on every pitch. Looking for a different approach against McCullough. And there goes the runner on the strike. And just getting in there safely was Marcus Tan. And I think the throw had it been just a little on the other side of the base, more to the first base side of that base, they probably would have got him. But the fact that Horn had to bring the tag all the way across, Tan slipped his foot in there. And yeah, that's exactly right. Good slide by Marcus Tan. He went to the right side of the base. The ball was about 12 inches the other way. So back to work here with an 0-2 count on Ratliff is McCullough. And he goes with the rise ball up and out of the zone. So a good one, good 0-2 pitch to run the count now to <coughs> one and two. The one, two, a swing and a miss. So Ratliff, after a leadoff walk in the first, has had fits facing McCullough, second strikeout, and there are two away now for Derek Zeckman. McCullough can throw the ball as hard as anyone, and he has most definitely dialed it up on the last two hitters. Signs and Ratliff way late on the third strike. And McCullough's going to go off the backstop, takes out the mascot, and Marcus Tan will make it easily <coughs> over to third base. And now... The second USA run is standing at third base with two away. We will get you caught up on the rest of today's scores. In a moment. And McCullough bear down. That's in there for a strike. So good location down at the knees inside on Zekman. And tough for those big guys to get around on those pitches. I know Jim Flanagan used to put those there all the time pinpoint accuracy and that one Zeckman takes that one in the rib area and he will make his way down the first base well the pitch before I'm sorry the, go ahead the pitch before came way inside and it looked like that's where he wanted to throw Zeckman Zeckman likes to get the arms extended tried to come inside again just too far in so we'll see here if there is going to be a pinch hitter. Looks like Benny Bruckert is going to make a change. You know, Plaza staying, I think. Maybe a runner for Zeckman. Nobody coming out of the dugout yet, but uh, putting on a helmet. Looks like that will be the move. So it looks like Chris Heinlein will get a little loose and take over at first base for Zeckman. Heinlein, we mentioned, one of the other interchangeable middle infielders. He's a second baseman and shortstop. Runs pretty well. So 
So Denny Bruckert, even with uh, two outs, electing to take advantage of the speed. That is the key element for the Americans. And a wave going fast and furious here in Whitehorse. A place where time stood still. And you got to love the enthusiastic crowd. Back to work is McCullough. And that pitch, a nibble in there for a strike. Palazzo nods in agreement. And the count now, no balls and one strike. Palazzo 0 for 1 tonight. Walked back in the first. Grounder to third in his last at bat. And a swing and a miss. So McCullough has reached back on these last two pitches and really gassed it up. Palazzo 0 for 1 with a walk. And he's behind in the count now, 0-2. And, and a good twist, just got a piece of that, did Palazzo. And he will stay alive. And some of the Canadian fans don't know the routine. If you get a ball and the pitcher's used it, he's got a feel for it, throw that back in there. 0-2, maybe uh, think about starting the runner, put some pressure on Avery behind the plate. I was already kind of surprised that the bunt wasn't on and that Denny Brecker didn't, you know, want to really emphasize a pushing another run across. But if they can get a hit here. And that's a ground ball fielded by Mason. Backhand over to first. Low, but dug up by Steve Malali. So 5-3 on the putout erases the threat. We still got ourselves a one-run game. USA in the lead back here with the continuation of our slide to five. Welcome back here for our slide to five. It will be the eight, nine, and one hitter for Team Canada. And it looks like it's Chris Walushka that will come in to hit for Avery. So again, Team Canada going to their bench. Lushka, of course, uh, one of the newer members to add it to Team Canada. And he's got good speed, good bat control. He can bunt for base hits and sprays it all over the field. Certainly doesn't possess Malali power, but again, contact hitter as Mancha missing outside. Walushka hailing from British Columbia, as was his the man he's replacing, Brian Avery. And that rise ball from Mancha was right where Mullins wanted it, but not in the strike zone. So the count now, two and two. And Mancha brings that one down, doesn't catch any part of the plate. So the count now full at three and two. Walushka leading things off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Team Canada trailing one nothing. And Walushka delivers with a base hit to left field. So leadoff man aboard for Canada. 
here in the fifth. So that will bring up now the shortstop, Kevin Schellenberg. It was Schellenberg's outstanding defensive play that has kept this a one-run ball game. And a chance now to, at the very least, move the runner along. Good time for small ball. Beautiful bunt laid down, fielded, and over to first in time. By the so way, that is Chris Heinlein making the play. He stayed in the game for Derek Zeckman. So 5-3 on the putout, but it's a great sack from Schellenberg, and we'll bring <laughs> him back to the top of the shop now for Brandon Horn. And we'll make sure that is Brandon Horn and it certainly is. So top of the shop now with a runner in scoring position, one away for Team Canada. Now batting for Team Canada, the second baseman, number three, Brandon Horn. So Mancha has just allowed two hits in this ball game. And Horn steps in, and he will look at a called strike inside corner. And Lee Evans has been pretty consistent with that right side of the plate all evening. Yo one, that's driven out deep, going back, back, and you can, great grab, what a grab out there, an amazing grab. And they're gonna bring the ball back in now and tag second base for the other out. I think the call is out. Ratliff left the yard, but appeared to make the catch as he went over the fence. And, and we'll have another uh, controversy, we I'm are sure. Going to have a controversy. Now, I'm not sure if he caught the ball over the fence and went over. That would constitute a home run, not a catch. If he caught the ball before it went over the fence and went over, then it would be an out. And it looks like. That's what's going to happen. So it's going to be a home run for Brandon Horn. And man, oh man, there has been no shortage of controversy here as a great grab from, from Ratliff. And boy, he used every inch of that 6-2 frame. And I do believe that it looked based on the way he reached that it was over, but from our vantage point, impossible for us to tell. Yeah, spectacular catch, no question he left the yard, no question he caught the ball. The issue is the one that you talked about, Lance, that is, was he still on the playing field or leaving the playing field as he make, made the catch? The safe call came from our third base umpire, uh, Jerry Dostal from the Czech Republic. Denny Bruckert making sure he had time called before he stepped on the field and now is going to talk, I think, to the entire crew. Well, you can bet if this was in major leagues, you better believe they'd be going to New York for this one. There's Great be job by our Sports Canada TV crew just to give everyone a look. But from our vantage point, and I don't know what, what you thought, Jim, did you think that he had caught that ball when it was already over the fence or did you think he was in fair territory when he caught it. I think right on the border, he had he definitely left the yard. He went up to the fence. He's tall enough that he was able to put his, uh, I think his stomach area on the fence and then rolled over. But I'm not certain uh, that he hadn't left the yard by the time he made the catch. Well, now the, the ball the ball was over the fence, no question about it. It's not that he caught and carried. It was clearly beyond the fence. And I think that would probably be their basis of it being called a home run because it was caught over the fence and remained over the fence. Had he caught it over the fence and was able to bring it back, then I would believe that's an out. But when it carried and he carried over into home run territory, I think that's why the ball was classified as a home run. And I think at this point the call has been made. Uh, it's, it will stand. It will be talked about, no doubt. I imagine the, the archive of this game will be getting a lot of hits when it's over. But right now, the score stands Canada 2 and the Americans 1. They haven't added it to the scoreboard yet, but there was a safe call made 
appeared to be made by Jerry Dostal, the Czech Republic umpire. Denny Bruckert still out around the pitching circle waiting for his opportunity to talk. Right now it's John Stewart and his coaches. And they're, uh, I'm wondering, John Stewart is not a happy man as he's walking. I think maybe he's just being taken over to the quieter area. Well, it certainly doesn't appear like he's infringing in a conversation. It looks like he was invited, and you see Greg Hicks. He's going to come and join the, the rest of the crew and make sure that the USA has their say. Now Greg Leather, the other Greg. Greg Leather from the East Coast, Greg Hicks from the West Coast are the two coaches or two of the coaches for Denny Bruckert. Looks like they're having a conference with the uh, UIC, the umpire in chief. And judging by the reaction of the USA, they seem pretty pleased. And yeah, we'll I, th I thought they had made the safe call, but uh, John Stewart, all the way from third base towards home plate, was not happy with whatever the home plate umpire told him. So we will wait for clarification here. So there is some mention about the catch and carry rule. So it'll be. So we're going to take a quick break and get some clarification here. So hang on and we'll clear this all up. So it looks like we've got some clarification, and Jim, did you <coughs> want to clarify it, or shall I? Uh, go ahead. I think we've, we are getting uh, feedback that tells us it's a little bit of both. Uh, one run will score, catch and carry, Lance. Well, it's a catch and carry rule, and it looks like no run's going to score. The catch was made. Runner's going to remain at third base, and there are now two out on the play. So it goes as a fly ball out and not as a home run and again Team USA will retain that one run lead a man on third a slow roller over to second Dudley over to first in time so another bullet dodge by Team USA of course the Canadian faithful none too impressed either way it's a one-run lead for Team USA. We'll be back here in Whitehorse in a moment. Homing, coming on back here for the top of the sixth inning. Never a dull moment when Canada plays the U.S. Doesn't matter what sport it is, and it'll be the four, five, six hitters for Team USA here in the inning. And Eric Ochoa with a flare, and everyone running that down, and the ball goes foul. So a good effort out there from... Shane Bolin and Derek Mason and Kevin Schellenberg was looming around as well, but no one able to come up with the with that.
pop up in foul territory. Ochoa so, has been on board twice today. He had the single back in the first. That is the lone RBI in the game, despite everything that's happened. And then reached on the walk to lead off in the fourth. So an 0-1 count here to Ochoa. And McCullough stays down and that pitch out of the zone to even the count at one and one. And that ball laced up the middle base hit. So Ochoa with his second hit of the ball game takes a big turn. He's been on base three times here. And leadoff man aboard for Team USA for Tyler Dudley. Now we will see here if Benny Brecker decides to play some small ball as there appears to be a bit of a hustle to either get a pinch runner out there. And that appears to be the case as you're going to see Chase Turner come in, take over the running duties. So Ochoa certainly has done his job today for a guy coming off an injury who certainly hasn't shown any lingering effects. And he will give way to Turner. Turner, one of the veterans on this USA team. Uh, this is his third cycle. He played in 09, or excuse me, in 13 and 15. So set to go here as McCullough's first pitch to Dudley is up and out of the zone. One ball, no strikes. Continues to be a one-run game despite all the controversy. And McCullough back to work. That pitch fouled straight back. So the count even now at one ball and one strike. So just like we spoke about Team USA having to be composed after that call on the Schellenberg play. Ground ball to short, over to second for one, over to first, not in time. As Ochoa may have re-injured. Dudley, Dudley. Sorry, Dudley, you're right. It looks like Dudley may have clipped the bag wrong and maybe done something with his knee, hopefully it's more of a cramp than it would be a knee injury. You never want to see that happen to anyone. So Schellenberg with a good play to erase the lead runner. 6-4 on that put out. But Dudley, if he can remain, will be on first base. The fielder's choice. So, Lance, while we have a break in the action, uh, one of the viewers writes in and asks about the out call, the catch and carry, the catch that Ratliff made, and said if he made the catch and if he carried it out, doesn't Walushka tag up and score? And the answer is no, because it's, it's a, a dead, dead ball. ball. Mm -hmm. So automatically play stops, and that's it, as it looks like we're going to have some defensive changes. It looks like Matua is going to take over in right field. And we are also going to have a pinch hitter. It would be, would, was going to be Bryce Kay coming up, and it will be uh, the pride of Long Beach, California. Kevin Castillo coming up to hit. So Shane Bolin has moved over to short. We will get you the change out there in left as Mason remains at third, <coughs> Horn at second, and Malali at first. So Kevin Castillo coming in here to hit for Bryce Kay, who was over with two strikeouts. So probably playing the odds there is Denny Bruckers. Well, and Kay has not had uh, good at bats against McCullough. Uh, three straight strikes, two strikeouts. Castillo was the starting third baseman last night against Australia. Had a hard single off the knee of Adam Folkard. Call back to work here, and 
first pitch that Castillo sees. He lifts up and into foul territory for strike one. Castillo capable of hitting the best pitching seems to dial it up a little bit when he's facing the best. Hands full with McCullough right now. And McCullough comes inside, <laughs> missing low. Count even at one ball and one strike. Still trying to get a beat on who has taken over in left field. I think may Mark Johnson may have just done a shift over as that one goes off the foot foul of Castile. I think the yes, question. I think it is Johnson. So Mark Johnson has moved over to left field. Is going back to work here against Castillo with a one two count. Swing and a miss. Good rise ball from McCullough. And they are two away now for Pat Sagdal. Sagdal, of course, 0 for 2. He's popped out and grounded out. But it took a great play from Kevin Schellenberg in his last at bat to take a hit and an RBI away. So runners still on first, two away here. Sagdahl with a cut. Thought he got a pitch he could handle, but didn't do a whole lot with it. So not quite sure if a fan made a spectacular grab or a not so spectacular grab. <laughs> well, certainly got the crowd buzzing. Joe Todd was out there. He would have caught it. We know mm, that. I think it was Joe Todd. It might have been. Gets around, you know, Jim. He really does. And McCullough looking for a nibble on that outside corner. No bite. Count now. One ball and one strike. Change up from McCullough in there for a strike. And he kept that in his back pocket for the last two innings. And picked now to unleash it, and it was a good one. And the count now one and two. And that ball laced up the middle, base hit. So Sagdahl delivers a two-out single. Will move Dudley over to second. And Sagdahl with a two-out single to keep the inning alive. So that will bring up Nick Mullins, the catcher. And once again, a prime situation here for Mullins with a chance to give the U.S. a little bit of breathing room and potentially plate another run if he can deliver a clutch hit here right now. Yeah, the Americans would love to get an insurance run here, no doubt. And it looks like Dudley is requesting someone to come in to run for him. Dudley went down when he tripped uh, running to first base, stayed in the game, but I think maybe has thought better of it. Looks at the situation and realizes the importance of his run. Looks like Jeff Nowicek <coughs> is going to come in and run. So he would be the insurance run or the second run of the game for the U.S. if Mullins is able to deliver right here. He did it against Australia, and that was just a day ago. And again, faced with a similar situation here. Only this time his team not down, they're up looking for some insurance. McCullough missing down in the zone. One ball, no strike. Novacek, the runner coming in at second base, is actually the other catcher for the USA. Doesn't have Dudley's speed, but Dudley obviously leaving for some kind of an injury. Not feeling right. And that ball laced out to center field. Tracking it in and making a grab was Ezekiel. So ball hit right on the screws, but right at Ezekiel. So that will do it. For the USA here in the top of the sixth inning. No runs, two hits, two men left aboard. We're going to go to the home half. 
one run game after this. I'll come back here just to get you caught up. It was New Zealand convincing winners over Great Britain. That score was 16 nothing. 16 nothing there, and of course this one will round out. So you're all caught up there, Jim. Uh, defensively, it looks like uh, Bryce K will come back into the game in left field. He left for the pinch hitter, so he will re-enter. Looks like that is the lone change, as best I can tell. All the other starter still in want to tip do a quick uh, tip of our cap to the folks at sports canada tv our director adam donnelly on the cameras jillian landrigan elliot goodyear and tom melanchuk bringing you that great video all week long 76 games being played 76 games being broadcast every game every inning every pitch so set here now, meet of the order up in the bottom of the sixth inning for Team Canada. It'll be 3-4-5 in Ezekiel, Malali, and Derek Mason. The scheduled three hitters here with a run to make up for Team Canada and six outs to do it. <coughs> and Tony Mancha has been a monster in that circle today. Managed to dodge a couple of bullets. But I'll tell you, in this game, you need a little bit of luck as well as skill. And Ezekiel had a notion, but laid off that rise ball, and that's been one of his Achilles heels, too. Him and Malali, they have been known to chase that rise ball. And that pitch inside from Mancha. So you could bet Mancha knows exactly where to go and where not to go. And this is not the guy you want to make a mistake to, as Ezekiel has good power to all fields. And that pitch missing outside. No one throwing, by the way, on the USA sideline. I think they're looking to Mancha to try and close this thing out. Other than the last inning with the hit and the almost home run, it was the one moment when they loaded the bases where it looked like they had him on the ropes. He walked a couple of batters. He does it here to lead off the sixth, but he seemed to regain his composure. They called timeout a couple of times, settled down. But uh, right now, the potential tying run down at first. So four straight innings that the leadoff man's been aboard for Team Canada. They have not been able to push a run across up to this point, and it'll be Steve Mullally now. 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk. And had a notion. Didn't pull the trigger, and it's ball one. So now's as good a time as any for the red and white to get a little something <laughs> going. And that pitch nibbled. No bite, though, and 2-0. and oh, Mancha wanted that pitch. And you can bet Mullins is having a few choice words just to let Lee Evans know he may have missed one. And Malali was sitting on that 2-0 pitch, way out in front, fouled it off the backstop. And the count now, two balls and one strike. Thanks for joining us here on Ballpark Broadcasting, Sports Canada TV. Lance Wynn, Jim Flanagan, 
Glad you've tuned in. We are in the midst of one heck of a ball game here. Had a little of everything. Injuries, some controversy, some good base running, some not so good. And that rise ball from Mancha. And again, Malali taking a deep breath, but didn't chase it. And now he's in the driver's seat with a 3-1 count. And that pitch missing out. So back-to-back -back walks here <coughs> to start the sixth inning. And there is now some work going on in the USA bullpen. So I think, Jim, if you are John Stewart and the skipper of the red and white, I don't know if you can not lay one down here to at least push your runners across. That will put two runners in scoring position with just one out. But that's my school of thought. I would expect it to be played that way, but uh, Mason, a very good hitter. Maybe they play to break it open here take the lead. It's Dwayne Weiler, by the way, down on the sideline warming up, now with his jacket off and uniform showing. Well, Mancha's done a good Houdini act here today on a couple of occasions as he starts <coughs> Mason off with a ball inside. So. Well, it, it's a tough decision for Denny Bruckert. You've got Mancha, the veteran, the ace of the staff, or has been to this point. Weiler has never played at this level, just made the club. Pitch well last weekend, but a tough spot to put the youngster in. And Mason, did he hold up? They're going to check. No, they won't. <coughs> Mullins will ask for an appeal, and no, he did not. So two balls and no strikes. Mancha's got some work to do here, or he will load these bases up. And Mason, I expect to be taking here, and that pitch outside. 3-0 the count. And we don't know if Mancha may just be running out of gas right now. And well, you look over on deck, it's Blake Hunter swinging a bat on deck. It was Hunter that hit the home run off of Weiler, who is warming up on the sideline. That was a game uh, in the exhibitions last weekend. So more cat and mouse, the more game within the game. You've got strategic it. moves. So 3-0, Mancha with some work to do here. Mason shouldn't take that bat off his shoulder, and he doesn't. That's in there for a called strike. And you got to make Mancha bring one more. So Canada threatening here, the 3-1, and that ball is chipped foul. So the count full now, and the drama continues. There are a lot of fans here holding their collective breath each and every pitch. So if you came out on this overcast day, you got what your money's worth. 3-2, and Mason fouls it. Just off the USA dugout, out of play. So we'll do it one more time here as this battle rages on. And that pitch missing down. So Mason, third walk in a row issued by Mancha. And the bases are loaded for the pinch hitter now. And it will be, like you said, Jim, Blake Hunter. And if you haven't heard about this kid, then you're in for a treat because he can hit the ball to all fields, has tremendous power, and he's very composed for a kid here on this stage for the first time. So is the decision to leave Weiler on the sideline and not make a move based on the, the last at-bat he had against Weiler? Or hoping that the veteran can find the groove again? And Manch in there for a called strike. You had to figure that Hunter had to at least look at a pitch. And Manch grooved one, and 
He's up in the count now, 0 and 1. Drama unfolding here, nobody out, bases loaded. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning, and <laughs> Mancha missing out to even the count at 1 and 1. See if Mancha can perform one more disappearing act or an escape act. Call it what you want. And a swing and a miss. So tied Hunter up on a really good pitch on the inside part of the plate. Great drop ball by Mancha. And we'll see here. Mancha can't close the door on the youngster. And that pitch had an ocean, didn't break the wrist or the plane, and the count now, two and two. Kid's got a good eye as well, very disciplined at the plate, choked up just a bit. The two, two. And that pitch in tight, so he works the count full now. A heck of an at-bat here for the youngster. And... The drama continues with the bags full. No place to put Hunter. And the pitch missing up. So Mancha has walked in the tying run here. Hunter gets credit for the RBI. Four consecutive walks issued. And we have ourselves a 1-1 game. And we have a visit to the pitching circle. Skipper Denny Bruckert going out to talk to Mancha. Well, I think, Jim, the issue you have now is that the game is tied, but the bags are still full with nobody out. So I suspect they're going to let him go, uh, another batter. Weiler, as we said, no experience at this level. A really tough spot to put the youngster in. I think that's why Mancha is still in the game. They hope he can regroup. It is still a tie game. So stepping into the box here is Mark Johnson now. And Johnson has homered in each of the first two Team Canada games. And he is hitting for Colin Walsh. We talked about some of the uh, people that would appear to be starters on the bench at the beginning of this one, and now John Stewart with the flexibility to make some moves to bring in the Blake Hunters and the Mark Johnsons, situations where they can really do some damage. So Johnson now with a 1-0 count, settles in, Mancha ready to work. And he pours in a strike to even it up at one ball and one strike. So regardless the outcome of this ball game, it has been a good one, as predicted. And the 1-1 missing up off the screen. No one going anywhere, regardless of the toss. And that can never be foreseen. So... You can see that Malali didn't even flinch over there. There's no need to go anywhere with the bases loaded and nobody out. You don't want to be that first out at home plate. And not much room behind home plate to the screen. I think the only way is if it kicks sideways, and that one didn't, came right back. Surprisingly, there have been <laughs> some very generous hops off this screen here. So Mancha's struggling just a bit, and... Behind in the count, two and one. And a swing and a miss from Johnson. So the count now, two and two. I think a majority of the fans in attendance here held their breath when that pitch was on its way. Tie ball game here in the bottom of the sixth. And that ball down the third baseline, just foul. So by a chalk line, that ball scooted foul. That would have been extra bases, and you would have had to assume two would have come in at the very least on that play. A so little bit of luck, and another bullet dodged. And still a lot of work to do for Mencha and Team USA here defensively. 
If it seems like Canada's had the bases loaded for the last half hour, uh, they have. And that's a missing out. So you're right. Looks like Denny Bruckert is going to stay with him regardless. And I don't know if Manch is just running out of gas here or. Well, he's alternated with some pretty good pitches. So he just has to reach into that reserve. The 3-2, and missing up. Another one, the go-ahead run gets walked in. So I think you're going to have to make the change yeah, here. He, he forced his hand. Denny Bruckert coming out to make the move. Uh, he waited, wanted Mancha to try and find that rhythm. It was obvious that uh, Tony had used everything he had from the tank, pitched a great game to this point but he has reached uh, that spot and it'll be the youngster, Dwayne Weiler, coming on in relief. So Weiler will take his warm-up pitches and certainly it's never an, an ideal situation when you come in in a clutch time in a big game here, world tournament, you inherit three base runners and you have no outs to work with. Mancha getting a good round of applause from the hometown fans, uh, generously given and well earned and deserved. So this pitching change, of course, brought to you by Ballpark Broadcasting and one of our generous sponsors and Mr. Jim Flanagan, who deals out some top-notch gear and one heck of a guy. So we'll be back in a moment after this pitching change. So we're back here as we continue to set the stage. <coughs> Team Canada with the bases loaded. Two runs have already been walked across by Tony Mancha. He's been replaced by Dwayne Weiler. And he will inherit three base runners. And he will face Ryan Bolin here. So the book on Mancha is still open. Those runners belong to him. Weiler from Bedford, Pennsylvania. And that ball driven out to center field. That's going to get down, base hit in the gap. Go all the way to the wall. One run's going to score. Two runs are going to score. Three runs are going to score. Base is clearing double for Ryan Bolin. And Team Canada has regained and taken a 5-1 lead. So a big clutch hit from uh, Bolin. We've seen that before as he wasted no time sending a laser beam out to the gap in left center and has cleared the bases. And that, of course, will bring up Matu Wa, who has taken over in right field. Well, you know a hitter's approach in that situation. You've had five consecutive walks, bases loaded, no place to put him. You have to think pitcher's coming in with a strike. He was ready. That ball's flared out, and that's going to drop at the shallow left field for a base hit. Bolin's going to put the brakes on. Matty Waugh, good heads up base running. He's taken second on the play. So Team Canada has taken the momentum 
And they're not about to give it back. Great throw coming in from the outfield. Looked like he was rounding third on his way home. A one hopper to Mullins stopped him in his tracks. Waugh going to second on the throw. So good discipline there from Boland to hold up. No need with a 5-1 lead here. And it's to the top of the shop in Brandon Horn. Horn has reached base twice, got robbed of that home run in the fifth inning. <coughs> and back here to bat in the home half of six. That ball laced up the middle. The hit parade continues. Bolin scores. They're going to hold up Wah. And Bolin slid in home plate. Hopefully he's not too hurt. An RBI single for Brandon Horn. And it's six to one now for Team Canada. So that'll bring up the left fielder, Shane Bolin, actually now the shortstop. Shane Bolin with a chance here to add to this six run total. Six runs pushed across, the ninth man to hit here this inning. Ground ball, Dudley to second over to first in time. So a well run, four, six, three, double play. A another run comes in to score in Wa, and it's seven to one for Team Canada, and it will be Brad Ezekiel now with his first look at Wyler. Well, as far as I know, when you look at the depth chart, you gotta ask yourself, Jim, where's Jeremy Manley? He would have been the person I would have thought would have been first out of the dugout to take over for Mancha. Mancha, I mean, Mancha did his job. You, you couldn't ask, he, he dodged a couple bullets. Team took a one run lead into the sixth inning. I think he just ran out of gas and unfortunately didn't get the support that he needed in relief. Weiler pours in a strike there to Ezekiel. I think the approach for the Americans very often is based on matchups, and Weiler did have a great outing against Canada just uh, last weekend, but it was the three-run homer by Hunter that beat him, and I think a good move on the part of John Stewart to put Hunter in as the pinch hitter and really forced Denny Bruckert's hand. He chose not to put the youngster in that position. Ground ball over to Dudley at second, over to first in time. So 4-3, and the bleeding has stopped, but not before the red and white. Push seven runs across. They lead this one, 7-1. Three outs to get when we come back here in Whitehorse.
Back here in Whitehorse, Yukon for the top of the seventh inning. Team USA with some work to do. And new pitcher for Team Canada, it's their ace, Sean Cleary. He's come in now to try and close the door. So it will be Gil Signs here to lead things off. And Cleary missing outside. And right off the bat, Cleary questioning the call from Lee Evans. I think I would have expected to see Schofield coming in in this spot uh, with a big six-run cushion now. Interesting uh, to see Cleary out there. I would have to agree with you. Or you've got to figure that even McCullough's had some time to rest after that long inning. I'm not sure why you wouldn't bring him out to maybe finish up or at least give it a go with the first couple batters. But they're gone to Cleary, and Cleary's in there for a strike. Count now two balls and one strike. I mean, you have some options when you're up 7-1. I'm just not sure using your ace in this situation is the most ideal thing, and a swing and a miss. So maybe Sean needs to work. Maybe he feels like he'll be sharper for his next start. I guess they realize the schedule may get a little easier in such that Canada's got Hong Kong tomorrow and then they got Australia a day later. So maybe or some flexibility against Hong Kong knowing that Cleary may not see any action tomorrow and you bring them back for Australia. So or perhaps to make sure the Embers are out. That too. You in this game as down goes signs Strikeout for Cleary. And we all know that in this sport, when a guy's down, you got to kick him one more time just to make sure all the life is out. So in will step Matt Ratliff now. Ratliff has walked, scored a run in the first, struck out in the third, and in the fifth. So 0 for 2 ball game. And his first look here at Cleary, and a good twist. Foul that straight back. So. Ratliff with a much better swing on the Cleary offering than we've seen in all in his certainly his last two at bats with Devin McCullough in the circle. Ratliff uh, figured to be the hero at least through five innings with that great catch and carry over the fence, nearly saving the game. But that's uh, long forgotten by now. Well, you you figure that sometimes you dodge bullets and you're living on borrowed time and. I think the difference would have been if Mancha would have had some sort of relief a little earlier on in that last inning. May have gone a long way to at least not giving up all those runs. Cleary's going to field that slow roller over to first in time. So two away on the one three put out. And it will be Chris Heinlein that will bat for Zekman. Came in for Zekman, and Heinlein will get a chance here to try and keep the USA hopes alive. I have to thank Mother Nature. She has allowed this game to go on rain free. And that's a check swing foul. So in the hole 0-1 is Heinlein. funny game sometimes Jim one one turn to the left or to the right and things can go totally in a different direction and I think Canada should take plenty of notes on this game and put it in their back pocket knowing that clearly this 7-1 score is not indicative of the way this game transpired Back to work here with a 0-1 count is Cleary. And Heinlein, looks like he went around. They're going to check it, and yes, he did. So down to their final strike, our Team USA trailing 7-1. And a 
that pitch from Cleary missing outside. It's the thing about Cleary, he wants every pitch. If it's close, he wants it. Okay, and I'm not sure how you were in the circle, Jim, but I don't think that's so uncharacteristic of a pitcher. Begging every chance I get. <laughs> As that pitch is fouled off. For the Americans, if the score holds, they will finish uh, their first three games with a one and two record, but they will have won one of the three games that they felt like they had to win, so they will live on to play another day. Well, they've got India and then the Dominican Republic, and down goes Heinlein. Final out is a strikeout for Sean Cleary, and Team Canada, they will remain undefeated at 3-0 with a 7-1 win. The U.S. will fall to one and two, but Jim, there is a light at the end of that tunnel with India, then they got the Dominican Republic before they will see Hong Kong and South Africa. So we expect them to be in the hunt. Final thoughts, where do you think things turned? It was a one nothing game for a long time. They are still in a position where they can control their destiny. They got the big win against Australia. Losing to Canada, they would like to have uh, hung an upset on them, but it makes that Dominican Republic game on Tuesday night look like the big one on their schedule. The way things are shaping up, Australia bouncing back with a win today. So the Americans with two losses, but the hard part of the schedule done. I think we're looking at Australia, Dominican Republic, and the U.S. perhaps fighting for those last spots in pool A. I would have to agree with you, and either way, we were treated to a one heck of a ball game, and the score, again, not indicative of the way things ran. So that's going to do it for us here today. Day three is in the books. Make sure you tune in for our recap. And, Jim, some final words? Player of the game, Lance. Player of the game, I think uh, that's a tough one. And... We might have to think about that we one. We might have uh, to think about that and get back to you on it. I mean, there were some clutch hits, but, you know, Mancha did a great job for six innings. You, you, you got to say that. He dodged a number of bullets. You have to like, you know, the way Ratliff played, regardless of what he did at the plate defensively. He was strong. So We'll chat about that one over dinner. We'll post it uh, at the Twitter, at, bowl, at BP Broadcasting. Lance, uh, Thank you for Lance Wynn. I'm Jim Flanagan, the rest of the ballpark broadcasting crew. We will see you tomorrow on day four, full slate of games, worldsoftball.tv. We'll see you then.